Are you having trouble finding places, churches that will take his body or do the service? Um, when when this first went down, that was a concern, and I and I said, my son's been in church his whole life, and let me tell you, he loved the Lord, and he, no matter what Shane did, he always asked for God's direction. What was the concern? That they wouldn't. They wouldn't give him a service because he, he was gay. Because of how some churches feel about the gay community. You have a lot of questions, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. What are your questions? What happened? Why what it happened? happened? And could it have been avoided? That's what keeps running through my mind, you know. Where was Shane at that given point in time? Um, I mean, I have a plethora of questions that I just, you know, I don't even share with her because I know she's, you know. For me, I don't want to know. You don't want to know why? It would hurt me too much. I'm already having nightmares thinking how he was gunned down. And I, I don't, I don't want to know the specifics of it. You know, I don't want to see... He's gone. He's not coming back. I don't want to see an autopsy report saying, well, he was shot 15 times. I don't want to see that. Mm -hmm. You know, my nightmare is already great, so I don't want to see that. Mm -hmm. It's not going to help me. For me, it's going to make it worse. For him, you know, maybe that will help him heal. That wouldn't help me. You know, because I would just keep picturing him being tortured in it. Mother's worst nightmare. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is there anger towards the person who did it? Because of my faith, I'm not going to be angry. I'm not going to just hug him and pour love out on him, but I can love him from a distance. He's gone now himself. But no, I'm not angry. Because what is that, what is that going to do? What is the anger going to do? It's going to eat at me too. Here in the UK, this type of violence is practically unheard of. Do you think that politicians, MPs in particular, you being an MP, now need to change the way they, they go about their work? I think that it's going to be very difficult in a democracy to ask elected representatives to change their ways. I've, I've been today to a surgery where I've seen my constituents. Uh, 60 of them came in. Uh, I, they were not searched. They were not asked who they were. I just saw everyone who'd made an appointment. I don't think in a parliamentary democracy one can start getting afraid of meeting the public because that is the lifeblood of politics, mm -hmm. being able to talk to your constituents. But what is so shocking uh, is the fact that someone in a premeditated way was able to know where this member of parliament was, where Jo was having her surgery, and then attack her in that way. So, of course, it is a worry. Um, you know, politicians seek to be recognised and noticed, but I think that more and more we will be seeking not to be recognised and noticed for fear that someone might be uh, wanting to express their views in a violent way. And, uh, but why it do is you a think terrible is, thing that's happened. Why do you think this... I mean, some people have talked about over the last 24 hours as the search for answers continues, because people, in times of great shock and grief, want answers. And they're wondering, of course, how did he get this gun? Could it be sort of this toxic rhetoric surrounding the referendum, for instance, or the fact that that, that, would, that could make in the, in the minds of, 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 a, of a few deranged people that could make politicians targets. Are you concerned about that at all? Well, I, I'm, I don't think it's necessarily to do with a single issue. We don't know. I think what we need to do is establish the facts, and that's why the police are there to help us to do that. I think once we've established the facts, we can then decide how this has happened and we can then look for answers. Until we do that, I think we are just speculating. Mm -hmm. Politics is tough. It's a tough job. It's, uh, especially in a parliamentary democracy, where you have obviously a free press 
and now we have a free internet and people can say what they want about politicians. On our committee, the Home Affairs Committee, which is the equivalent of your Homeland Security Committee, mm -hmm. we've already decided before this event to look at the issue of the way in which people approach public figures on the internet. The issue of internet trolling does not just affect us as politicians, but all celebrities. And as soon as someone becomes well known, um, people feel they know them personally. And the internet has and changed that, that equation, can, that relationship quite a lot. Because it has, you are digitally. You're absolutely I mean, right. You are digitally, I mean, I guess, in a, the virtual world, very approachable and available to anybody, really. You're absolutely right. The big change, of course, there's been violence in the past. We've had a BBC um, presenter, Jill Dando, who was uh, killed on the streets of London. We've had MPs being blown up by the IRA. So this has happened before, but not in recent memory and not mm -hmm. to someone who is not associated with controversy. And I think the big change has been the availability of social media, I'm not blaming it, I'm just saying it's a fact, mm -hmm. and people feel they know people personally. You can be tracked wherever you go. People know that I'm sitting talking to you now. They will know in a few moments where I'm having my uh, dinner. They will know the train I will be getting back uh, on to London. They will know that tomorrow I'm on a cycle ride. And you're uh, not in worried Leicester at all. to raise funds for a local group. In the aftermath of this, um, you, there's well, there at least a part of you and your colleagues, what do they tell you, other MPs? from both parties, from, you know, do they say, I really, I think I'm going to need security now when I hold my, my meet and greets with my constituents? Is anybody talking like that now? No, they're not. I think British MPs are not going to want to have security. I recently hosted an Indian colleague who'd come from New Delhi, mm. and he was shocked that I was walking around without any security. I mean, your congressmen don't have security, your senators don't really have security. It's just... Um, the president and members of the cabinet and others. Uh, we can't. We are elected officials and we have to... Our lifeblood is, is talking to our constituents and that will continue to be the case. But I think there probably needs to be a review of security of offices. This needs to be looked at carefully and where we go and what we do. But we will never get to a stage in Britain where we will have uh, security guards or bodyguards with us. It's just not going to happen. I don't think that is going to happen. It's not going to happen in the United States either, mm -hmm. despite the fact that our gun laws are quite different. But I think what we do need to do, to do is to allow the police to get on with their job, to find out the facts, and then to assess what has occurred. Donald Trump rolled into D.C. to be deposed in a lawsuit involving a former employee. Exhibit A of the kind of political distraction causing some Republican strategists and donors to quietly discuss ways to dump Trump. And a source familiar with the discussion tells CNN talks are ramping up. We have to have our Republicans either stick together or let me just do it by myself. I'll do very well. Despite right. that Thank new you, warning, right. concern about Trump has anybody. grown from Everyone angst to near right. panic. Okay. The judge who happens to be, we believe, Mexican. Not just because of controversial Trump comments, but the way voters are reacting to him. He's trailing Hillary Clinton, but most alarming to Republicans, his favorability rating is at an historic low. A new Washington Post poll this week shows Clinton is hardly well liked with a 55 percent unfavorable rating. But that pales in comparison to Trump. A whopping 70 percent say they have an unfavorable view of the presumptive GOP nominee. Discussions about cutting Trump loose are focused on the Republican convention, finding a way to free delegates for Trump to vote for someone else. One idea is to use the GOP convention rules committee to vote to unbind Trump delegates. Another, CNN is told, is to dust off a rule from 1976, the last contested GOP convention called a conscience clause, allowing delegates to vote for a new candidate if they disagree with something theirs said or did. But even those involved in discussions underscore that the moves would be unprecedented and extremely hard to execute. Former RNC Chief of Staff Mike Shields agrees. The delegates are bound right now under the rules to nominate Donald Trump 
That's the rules of the Republican Party. They would have to unbind themselves. They would have to go through a process of changing the rules actively to say that we want to go against the wishes of the voters. And has that ever happened That's before? never happened before, and I think it would be really, really uh, a difficult, heavy lift. CNN is told that neither the RNC chair nor GOP congressional leaders are taking part in strategy talks to oust Trump, even after Trump's new taunts. Our leaders have to get a lot tougher. And be quiet. Just please be quiet. Don't talk. Please be quiet. You can't make this up sometimes. Um, I'll just say we represent a separate but equal branch of government. As for the Clinton campaign, they're openly reveling in the GOP discord, marking the day, the one-year anniversary of the Trump campaign, with this video. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. 